2009 public hearing of the Board of Architectural Review. We appreciate those of you in attendance this evening. The board was established by zoning ordinance in 1958. Our first historic district was Gratz Park, and we now have a total of 14 historic districts in Lexington. The board, which is appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the Urban County Council, is part of the Division of Historic Preservation. The Historic Preservation Office maintains a full-time staff to assist you with your projects. We encourage and recommend that all applicants use them as a resource in the application and approval process. The Historic Preservation Office is located at 101 East Vine Street, room 220. It is our procedure to consider applications in the order in which they were listed on our agenda. In each case, we will have a presentation by the staff and will hear any additional comments from the applicant. The board will then ask questions or make, make comments regarding each application and may then hear comments from any interested parties or people in the audience. The chair will then ask the board members to entertain a motion. If you wish to address the board, please come forward to the microphone, state your name and address for the public record. We also ask that you write your name on the sign-in sheet by the door back in the corner so that the information can be recorded correctly. Before we begin with our certificate of appropriateness applications this evening, I'd like to note the following staff approvals before we be begin. There are certain items that the staff can approve, eliminating the necessity for all applicants to hear to appear before the board. There are a total of 13 approved applications noted on today's agenda. They include uh, 280 South Ashland Avenue, replace gutters in the South Ashland Historic District, 320 Aylesford Place, 320 East Maxwell Street, 418 East Maxwell Street, 424 East Maxwell Street, 339 Park Avenue, and the Aylesford Historic District, 194 North Limestone, and Constitution Historic District. 470 North Broadway and 631 North Broadway in the north side. Uh, also in the north side, we have 420 West 2nd Street, 418 West 6th Street, 449 West 3rd Street, and finally we have 353 South Mill Street um, in the South Hill Historic District. We shall now proceed with the review of applications for Certificate of Appropriateness. Application number one is case number 12270642-A, located at 642 West Main Street. Is the applicant or owner present? For 642 West Main Street. If you come up to the microphone, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Randall Vaughn. I live at uh, 830 Glendover Cove. And you have a co-owner or co-applicant with you this evening? Uh, I have um, Mr. Lee Jackson. He's chairman of our Education Foundation. We are technically the applicant for this, uh, this historic marker. Okay. If you could come forward, sir, also and state your name and address for the record. Lee Jackson, 2804 Mount McKinley Way, Lexington. Have you all had a chance to review the staff findings and recommendations? Uh, yes, we have. Are you all in agreement with those? Yes, we are. Do you have any comments or questions concerning it? Uh, not really, just in, unless there's questions from the board. Uh, okay. S staff, because this is one that you all have recommended um, to approve as submitted, do you have any further comments? No, um, we don't. Thank you. Any, any questions from the, the board, and then I'll go to the audience. Is there anyone from the audience who would like to address this case? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, um, in reference to case number 12270642-A at uh, 642 West Main Street, I'd like to approve the application as submitted. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Case number two tonight is 0651-0640-C at 640 Ellesmere Park. Is the applicant or owner present? If you'd come forward, sir, and state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm John Hesselden, room 640 Ellesmere Park, Lexington. Have you had a chance to review the staff's findings and recommendations? I have. Are you in agreement with those? I am. Okay. Do you have any further questions about their findings and recommendations? It said uh, it'll receive a cricket for water protection. What is a cricket? Uh, I'm sorry? 
the last line of it said the existing chimney is to be flashed and will receive a cricket for Cric <laughs> water cricket? protection. What exactly oh. is it? Is it a it's, diverter? It's an or angled sort? piece of metal it, to it'll, help deflect the water so that you don't end you. up That's with a pond I at the valley that or at the base of the, the low point. Uh, is there any further comments from the staff on this application? No, thank you. Is there any questions or comments from the board? I have none. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to address this case this evening? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. In regards to case number 0651-0640-C, I move that the application be accepted as submitted. Uh, for clarification, for the chair's purposes, would that be with the conditions um, suggested by staff? Uh, yes. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Is there any further discussion of the motion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Application is approved at, uh, based on the staff conditions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Case number three this evening is case number 1302032 1-B, located at 321 Marino Street. Is the owner or applicant present this evening? They are not, but they've received their staff report and have looked over the findings and are in agreement. Did they, they, they were in agreement? Mm -hmm. Did they have any follow-up questions? Not at this time. Okay. Is there anything else the staff needs to add to this application? Uh, no, the only thing I would suggest um, if you do sound this is uh, to, as a body, is, uh, decide if you want it to come back to the, the details to come back to the staff or to the BOAR. Okay. Do you know if the applicant plans to be here this evening? He did not indicate one way or the other. I'm inclined to call this one back in a few minutes just to make sure that he does want to be addressed. Uh, did you state that they were in agreement with the findings? Yeah, that's what, our, yeah. Our agreement. That's what I thought she said. Okay. Do you want to hold on? Uh, if they're in agreement, there's no harm done if we wait. I just, in case something has come up and they, they are late and they do have something, I just hate that we've gone ahead and looked at it without hearing them. If I, can we need a motion to table that? Or can we... Can we just put it at the end of the docket? Uh, you can just let motion. it scoot down okay. the agenda and come back to it. We'll return to case number three later in the docket. Looking at case number four, case number 0051211-B, located at 211 Arcadia Park. Is that applicant present? Please state your name and address for the record. Um, Lori Boggs, 211 Arcadia Park. Have you received the staff report on this application? Yes. Are you in agreement with its findings and recommendations? Um, on the recommendations where you dropped the four feet, that still exposes the neighbor's air conditioning unit to my front view, so I wanted it to go out a little bit further. Okay. Let, um, are you in agreement with the final details of the handrail and guardrail to be submitted to staff for review? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so your, your question concerns a six-foot privacy fence? Yeah, the privacy fence. I'm trying to block the view of that side jar and get past that air okay. conditioning unit. Let me do this. Let me have the staff come up and give the report insofar as it concerns the height of the fence issue. If you want to have a seat, and then when they're okay. done, we'll bring you back up for additional questions and for your presentation. That way we'll streamline just what the issues are. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Giacchio? We're all yours. Thank you. We'll streamline this. Uh, this is the duplex uh, at 211, 213. Uh, the one in question is the one in the foreground. Uh, this is the porch, which we aren't discussing. This is the property line, the right property line. This is coming forward. Now we've gone all the way back to the garage and we're looking toward the street. Now we're going to go back to the garage and come forward again. This is the house next door. 
and this is uh, where the uh, damaged uh, air conditioner unit is. And it's just a shot of the street line, your streetscape uh, going down uh, where the uh, building line is. The building line is uh, the 30 feet they were looking for. It's, it takes you right back to the corner of the house next door, which is like three feet forward of the corner of the house with the porch. Uh, the other half of that duplex, which you'll see there at uh, 213, has that little jog, which is the, the three foot jog that brings that up to the location of the building line. Uh, the applicant's request the board grant the COA to install a six foot high wood privacy fence along the east property line, which extends from the southeast corner of the garage to within 30 feet of the front property line. The proposed fence is to be constructed with four by four posts, two by four rails, and one by six boards having dog-eared top. The fence will parallel the neighbor's rear yard picket fence, which is along that property line. We've listed the guidelines for your reference. Uh, the proposed wood privacy fence along the east property line is found appropriate and within the guidelines, except for the extent of the six foot high fence as it extends down the side yard of the property. Guidelines 3I, 3-1-D states fences of wood board for privacy should be located in the rear yard and generally be no taller than six feet. Privacy fences of this height should be at least halfway back from the front of the building to the back wall to the side of the house. Staff finds the extent of the six foot high privacy fence should terminate at a point aligned with the rear plane of the entry porch and then a privacy fence no taller than six feet extend forward to a point in line with the front plane of the entry porch. Recommendations, staff recommends details of the handrail be submitted to staff for review before the uh, purchase of said material and to the height of the six foot high wood privacy fence along the east property line be reduced to, two, to four feet at a point in line with the rear plane of the entry porch and then the four foot high fence terminate at a point in line with the front plane of the entry porch. The applicant is here. Any questions for Mr. Ginocchio? If the applicant would come back forward then. Thank you, Mr. Ginocchio. While, while she's coming up, could the staff note one small teeny clarification? Um, it's correct in the text, but uh, I believe Mr. Ginocchio inadvertently misspoke about the six foot and four foot there toward the end. Um, a privacy fence, not in the recommendations part, but in the findings part, uh, verbalized that it would be a six foot extending forward to the uh, point by the front porch. The intent is for a four foot. As, and then that is correct in the recommendations, and you stated that, but I just for audio purposes wanted to make that adjustment. Oh. If I should have pointed that out on the screen. If the board, do you need it pointed out? You're just talking about how the, where the six foot fence would come forward and then I guess slope down to a four foot fence and come forward uh, along the driveway to the edge of the porch on the right hand side. I'm, I'm right. clear on it unless the other board members need it. I, I understand. Uh, Mr. Janakio, before you sit down, did you happen to take any notes or notice uh, since the applicant did mention the intent of blocking the view of the air conditioning unit at the, of the neighbor's house. Do you have anything on that in your findings, just as far as location and? There's. Uh, uh, I, I know well, it's on the neighbor's house. The location, no, it's it's 
Yeah. I just saw it in the photo, be, but didn't know if you had any other notes pertaining to that. It's going to be in the four foot, four foot section. Okay. I do have a little sketch that I. Uh, I put uh, Randy to you put that little pencil sketch that I uh, right. This was just a little field note that I we did when we were there. Uh, take a look at the grade elevation and how that works. Uh, this is the driveway, and it looks like the property line is about five feet from the neighbor's house, and the the window sill is five foot four up, and then there's like a, a foot drop in elevation. So you know uh, what would happen there is. As far as vision out this window, it would probably, you know, not be hindered by a higher fence. But uh, our, the way we read the guidelines at staff level is that we felt we, uh, we ought to make that step down. Thank you, Mr. Dacchio. Um, Ms. Boggs, your your comments back on the fence issue. Uh -huh. um, no, the main point was it's that's a me big huge mechanical piece. That's my front door. Also, my back door is right off that driveway. So either entrance into my home, you see that. That's why I want to be able to bring a fence up. I can see over a four foot fence, but I can't see over the six foot. So right past the air conditioning unit, if we could stop it there and then take it to the floor, that would be fine. How far along the property or along the house boundary is the uh, air conditioner unit? It ba it's right up next to their house, but there's a little bit of a grade up in the... Well, I'm telling you specifically from the front edge of your house towards the back edge of your no, house. Is it halfway? Is it two-thirds? Is like it a quarter of the way? It's like halfway. You, you agree with that, Mr. Because the six-foot would kind of cover like that much of the air conditioning unit. I just want to cover rest of it and do the four that way when people get in out of their car they can't see it I mean I've looked at it for 18 years but um, my guest it's, it's kind of become embarrassing people I have over seeing the air conditioning and the mess that's around it too is pretty bad. or do you all have any questions comments mr. Magrish um, in addition to doing uh, having this new fence are you doing some new landscape work along yeah, there as well? Um, everything in front of my fence on my property line we're going to clear all of that I'm actually going to clear back behind on their property line too to a point um, just so it'll be clear through there and we don't have the weeds growing up over the four foot fence okay. so we're going to clear all that out and then I'm going to landscape it with I call it monkey grass right it's like a decorative grass right and we're going to run it all the way up there to I really wanted the fence to end right right before I got to that last window. Mm -hmm. um, that way the utility company can get in there and read their meter. And then I have a stepping stone I was going to put there for them. But I was going in that monkey grass right at that stepping stone. So. But the, uh, those pines and so forth would remain? Yeah, we're going to trim those back so that they're back behind the property line. Okay. Um, did and then there's some wild, I think there's honeysuckle growing in there. We're going to yeah, well, that out. It's Lexington. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get everywhere. all that out of there and the poison ivy and everything else that's growing in there. There's a couple of trees growing up against their house. So. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the, that existing air conditioning unit that you want to cover is basically, is it basically directly across from the steps to your door? Um, yeah. As soon as you come out the door, you can see that air conditioning unit. Okay. So. so basically, you just want to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, that's the main thing. I want and to then, cover. if if beyond that, yeah, that be forward, fair. maybe uh, however many feet that would be, mm -hmm. if that was the lower. Yeah. Section. Or if you can bring the six foot and then maybe drop it to five, five would block the view. The four is okay. always too low, and maybe because six is too high for you. But if you if you want me to grade it down, come six feet, drop to five, and then drop to four, they have like a step action. That's fine. 
that might be more aesthetically pleasing than going six to four. Right. Grade it down a little bit. Yeah. So I'm more than happy to do that. Again, I just wanted the air conditioning unit blocked. Okay. That's sort of the key issue. So you don't come there. in and out of the door, and when you're getting in and out of your car, you don't see it. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, and just as a comment, I have to say I'm more inclined to approve a five-foot fence there than a six-foot uh, based on Mr. Giannacchio's sketch of the sill height of the neighbor's windows uh -huh. and just not blocking their view. Yeah, yeah that's also, fine. But also meeting your needs of obscuring the AC unit. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, I've lived 18 years and I'm kind of used to it, but then it's gotten to the point. Since they smashed the unit, it's really become an embarrassment. Anybody who comes over and people have been over more than once keep commenting on this air conditioning unit. And I'm like, I just don't want to look at it anymore. Is there anyone from the audience who'd like to comment on this case? What type of fence um, are you going to put in? Are you going to put the prefab panels? Or are you going to build slatted fence? Um, it'll be, it's going to mimic exactly what I have in my backyard. It's real simple. It's just straight board. And I think the little corners were cut down. I think it's that dog eared. And the guy that I had to replace my picket around my back door because um, it rotted and fell over, so I replaced that. And the guy that did that, he didn't like the prefab, so he just cut the boards himself for me. And he'll do that on this. It's the same, same type of your backyard then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they'll just be close. They'll just be a privacy fence. No, can't see in the yard. But. Any other comments from the board? Well, I was just going to say, just as a suggestion, that um, if the if it was a five foot fence um, to the out the street edge of the air conditioning unit, where it steps to four for the continuation of the run, um, would that be an acceptable compromise? Yeah. So would that be six foot? to the edge of their backyard and then go to five and then eventually four or well, can I, I bring the six on out a little bit more well and then it come on down um i think probably if the the six foot would need to sort of end right about the edge of their the back of their house okay. it depends on its increments of you know like four feet or five feet or whatever wherever that hits and then it would step down to five to that the edge of that the street edge of the air conditioner and then step to four for the continuation of the run. Okay, yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, five and then four at the end of that. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. That would be, uh, I think, a compromise that might be acceptable. Yeah. And then are you okay if I don't take it all the way to the edge of their house? I kind of wanted to leave, just stop it right there at that utility yeah, I'll, electric I'll, meter. I'll, it's back a little further than you all had said. I was actually going to say that the, the guidelines provide that a fence should not come any farther forward than the middle of the point between the front and the rear points of your house. Mm -hmm. So what your, your application actually has to bring that fence forward, I guess technically past the actually corner of your side of the house and matching with the corner of the other side of the house. Yeah. I didn't right want it all the way up that far. I wanted it, but right, I want it to end right before you get to that, roof, that window on the edge of their house. But but I think if what we're talking about is having a six foot fence extend from the backyard or from, I guess, the corner of yeah, your garage, the garage forward uh -huh. to whatever point makes sense for the next fence supposed to be set closest to the rear of their of their house which yeah, looks that's parallel. where the picket fence is now it, yeah it looks parallel to the rear of yours to step that down to five foot for a run to um Into that. to to pass to immediately pass where the air conditioner unit is and then step it down to four um and, and then it, it's okay if i don't take it out you all had kind of written no no I, I, I would actually prefer that you that you you, you don't bring it forward i i, okay, yeah, I, I think that under the guidelines that the intent of the guidelines is to stop fences from coming all the way forward okay. unless they're um, some type of historical nature that yeah. one has been existing okay. there and doesn't look like in this case there is um, and that stopping in the middle of the property line as close as we can makes more sense okay. and therefore bringing that five foot fence forward right to where the pro the, and then the four air conditioner in yeah. step it down to so four it probably foot won't for be a, that much but a four yeah four fence. for a for a half a run or whatever that'd be fine Just to clarify what we've hodged together here, it sounds like what you guys are saying is from the garage 
up to the rear of the neighbor's house six is six foot. feet tall. From that point to clear the AC unit or the electrical meter? The AC unit. The, okay. From the rear of the neighbor's house to the to front the of the AC unit is at five feet. feet. Uh -huh. and, then, and then you'd like to drop down again to four, four feet. Four feet to right to where that glass window right on the edge starts. Your neighbor's window. Yeah, so there won't even be a... Essentially, the, there. essentially, the fence would start at where the utility line comes in. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Seems to be what you're saying. Yeah, that's what. That's what. I, that's what yeah, I, I didn't want it all the way up. That's too far up. Yeah. That's why. That's what I understand you to be saying. Essentially, your fence wouldn't even cover that utility box. It would start yeah. there and then start to run back. Yeah. I mean, I do want to be able to get back behind there. So. That's, what, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, in order to maintain a clean cleaner look of fence heights uh, can we just do away with the four foot section and go from six to five and stop at the meter I don't have a problem with that yeah that's fine with me too I think the more jumps we get the more noticeable okay. that's fine with me. jumbled appearance chair will entertain a motion In reference to case number 00510211-B at 211 Arcadia Park, I'd like to make a motion to approve the application uh, with the conditions that the fence be taken at six feet from the garage to the rear of the neighbor's house, the, the adjoining uh, next door neighbor's house, um, then drop down to five feet to a point uh, just about where the electrical meter is. Um, I would, though, like to add that um, the final layout of the mm -hmm. fence should be submitted back to the staff just for their comments and just to Can make I, sure it works. I, I'm just going to draw it. Is that okay? That's fine. Just <laughs> this, so it, the final is uh, to scale, and it shows exactly where it stops, starts, okay. and where the change of elevation is. It, it can be hand-drawn, but that need, but it'll need to come back to staff before you begin right. construction. All, all you have to do to, about the to scale is do the best you can and then annotate it with measurements. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of take that picture. And then yeah. And then just, just make notes that, you know, it's um, 17 feet of this okay. and 12 feet of that. And, you know, okay. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, um, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next, we have three cases which will be brought uh, together because they're owned by the same uh, owner and applicant. These are case numbers 0522-0305-B. 0522-0309-A and 0522-0313-A, uh, located at 305, 309, and 313 Dantzler Court. Um, is the uh, owner applicant present? I'd like to make, briefly give, this is sort of a, a unique situation, I'd like to give just a brief overview of it before you all consider it. Although this is a, is a somewhat unusual and unique situation from what the board is customarily used to reviewing, it's clearly, it is clearly within the purview of the board's authority to address this issue. It concerns the demolition of three properties located at 305, 309, 313 Dantzler Court in the Seven Parks Historic District. The reason this case is somewhat as u unusual is not only because it deals with three properties at the same time, but here the board is not dealing so much with the specific pros and cons of maintaining the visual and aesthetic character of a particular property or neighborhood as much as with the welfare of those living within the district. Whereas Article 13 of the Zoning Ordinance generally speaks in terms of those alter, alter, alterations which could be detrimental to the character and surrounding, of the surrounding property, specifically in the H1 overlay generally. Here we're dealing with alterations presumably that will enhance 
surrounding properties, as well as providing for the health, safety, and general welfare of those living both within and outside of the H-1 overlay. Additionally, whereas Article 13 normally speaks to specific streets and structures, here the board is dealing not so much with a specific street, structure, or particular alteration as it is with the district and the overlay as a whole. Article 13.5 of the zoning ordinance bestows upon the Board of Architecture Review both the authority and responsibility for addressing and ruling upon the designation of structures, premises, and areas within historic districts. Clearly, the intent and application of Article 13 also speaks to environmental issues affecting and influencing structures within the H-1 overlay. Therefore, it's within the Board's authority that in the course of preserving, protecting, and perpetuating the character, as well as preserving the property values in historic districts, it may prevent the creation or perpetuation of environmental influences adverse to such purposes. The Board has the authority under the intent section of Article 13, besides ensuring alterations to structures are in keeping with the visual and aesthetic character of the neighborhood, additionally to protect those structures, areas, and locations in the interest of economic well-being, prosperity, health, safety, and general welfare of the people of Fayette County. Article 13.1c5 specifically states that the board may take actions to prevent the creation of environmental influences adverse to such purposes. Thank you. I'll let people that are much more familiar with this now explain Thank you. what's going on. Thank you. Is the applicant present? If you could please come forward, state your name and address for the record. My name is Daryl Bennett. I'm with the Division of Water Quality, uh, 101 East Vine, or the Urban County Government Division of Water Quality. Have you had a chance to uh, review the staff's recommendations? Yes, I have. Are you in agreement with those? Yes, I am. Does the staff have anything further to add to, uh, to this report? Uh, just to answer any questions the board may have. Is there any questions from the board on these two cases? Well, it's not really a question. I, I think that it's very clear the reason and the necessity to remove these structures uh, due to the flooding problems. But I did want to say that it is always uh, a bit of an issue when you are removing structures from a historic district and um, leaving a rather large gap in the overall fabric. And uh, it, it is not something that should be preceded uh, should be done without um, sort of careful study. Uh, I do hope that the land, once vacant, will be maintained and, and uh, still become an asset to the neighborhood as a green space when it's not underwater. Um, so uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, it, it's, this is the sort of dire solution um, for an environmental problem and not something that would normally be approved. Thank you. Mr. Hosfield. Uh, for the sake of our understanding what has happened up to this point, can you describe any efforts made to solve this problem short of demolishing the structures? What, what other things have occurred? We, we hired a consulting firm to review uh, the the hydraulics and hydrology of the entire neighborhood and determined the approximate level of the 25-year floodplain. And these houses all flood at the 25-year storm. And that's a kind of a moderate sized storm. You had about a 4% chance on any year getting that. Um, the, with any stormwater flooding issue, you, you essentially have three possible solutions. And one of them is to increase the, the capacity of the downstream system, well, that, that would flood properties on the other side of the railroad, and it's the railroad here that has created a dam. And um, another is to try to detain water upstream. Well, the, there's no room to detain water upstream at this location because you'd be having to tear down homes up there. So the, the third solution is simply to remove the residents that floods, and uh, that would prevent for future owners and property owners to uh, to suffer from that. The the flooding itself will still occur? Of in, the property, property? It will. Yeah, the neighborhood will, the, the flooding characteristics of the neighborhood will not change. Are there, uh, 
With the space being turned over to green space, are there any future plans for uh, water being percolated in a more natural way, rain gardens and whatnot, to deal with this runoff problem? We don't have any immediate plans for such. We always encourage neighborhoods, if they want to take the an area over as a garden, that that is something that, in fact, on, the, on North Limestone, we have done that recently with the Neighborhood Association and the church. We would certainly encourage that and uh, hope that they would do it. We, we have no plans other than to make sure that it is maintained as an open space. I, I have no further questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bennett. I'm, um, I would just reiterate that uh, I, I believe these are appropriate circumstances where demolition uh, is required. Um, based upon the report that this structure, these structures are not going to be able to be maintained as historic structures without constant maintenance and that over time they were going to degrade and fall into disrepair regardless. Um, and that uh, under the guidelines, demolition is uh, clearly not favored. Um, it is appropriate in the narrowest of narrowest of circumstances. Um, and this case happens to fit one of those narrowest of narrowest circumstances. Um, and uh, I would uh, echo Mr. Magrish's thoughts um, and reflections um, that demolition leaves a hole in the fabric of historic areas. Um, in this uh, time, it seems unavoidable. In other times, uh, it is certainly not appropriate, um, nor uh, uh, should we approve it. But I think in this case, it's, it, is, uh, it should be done. I, I appreciate the efforts made that it was not a decision made lightly. I, I don't think it's easier for anybody just to tear it down in this instance. But it, it does sound like it, it's the bottom line situation of this is what needs to happen, and it's it's unfortunate. The chair will entertain a motion at this time. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me. Are there any comments from the audience uh, or anyone in attendance this evening? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. In regards to case number zero five two two zero three zero five. Dash B, as well as case 0522-0309-A, and also 0522-0313-A. I move that the application be approved as submitted. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there any further discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, sir. Next case on the docket is case number 0929-0552-B, located at 552 East High Street in the Aylesford Historic District. Is that applicant present? Please come forward and state your name for the record. My name is John Bauer. Uh, Mr. Bauer, have you, uh, good evening and thank you for coming. Have you had a chance to review the staff's recommendations and findings? Um, yes. Are you in agreement with those? Um, yes and no. There are a few things I, that I would like to say. Okay. Um, if, 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 let me do this first. You said yes and no. If you could identify for me the areas that you're in disagreement with, is what I'll do is if we can identify those areas of disagreement, I'll then have the staff pre present on that area sure and then call you back up to discuss the disagreement areas that way we can streamline it rather than have a full staff report absolutely I was asking for a parking uh, spot on each side and they said one was okay but not on the other side okay so your, your disagreement is you want both parking spots and not just one well I'll is take that... one rather than none <laughs> I mean I just want to make sure I would I'm prefer to have two yes okay the thing that I wanted to add was um, I think that I, if I did it like in grassy pavers, that it would look that it would look better if I just used like space in between. That's the one thing that I wanted to point out about that. It, is, was that you, that's your intent for both parking spaces? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because then it can kind of doubles like a patio. The the biggest problem I'm having is that the people just park there anyway. Sure. Well, let me do this. Um, let me have the staff recommendation sure. or the staff report first on this. If you want to have a seat, um, we'll let them present, ask questions, and then we'll call you back up to. Uh, to detail um, your discussions about the grassy paver solution. Hey. 
this is project or the home of 552 East High Street. Uh, this is the side street, the garage, and the existing driveway. And it's a little pad right out in front of the uh, pedestrian door. We have this little site plan. Oh, thank you. So there it is, the circle of the area in question. <clears throat> the new owner of this property is requesting this time the board grant COA to expand the parking area off the existing nine foot wide driveway by two vehicles, one to either side of the driveway. In the application, he indicates three people rent the house and one rents the garage, a separate address, 301 Oldham. Off the street parking is limited and renters are parking on the grass. The proposed parking space, spaces are noted to each being 10 foot wide by 13 foot long with an arc at the sidewalk end. The proposed paving material is to be either concrete or grassy pavers. We've listed the guidelines for your reference, the findings. Typically, a garage 24 foot in width will have its nine foot wide driveway flared out an extra 10 feet in front of the building to accommodate a second vehicle. Therefore, the staff finds the paving of one additional parking space to the right side of the driveway appropriate in accordance with the guidelines. Conversely, the proposal to construct a second parking space in the left side of the existing drive is found to be inappropriate, not within the guidelines. The extra expanse of paving would become visually dominant. That's guidelines 3, 5B. And the development of the existing open space, green space, not in scale and character with the neighborhood, which is guideline 3, 6, E. Recommendations, stack recommends approval as submitted with the following condition. Additional parking spaces be limited to a single space and it be added to the right side of the existing driveway. The applicant is here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ginocchio. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Ginocchio? Magrish? Um, Mr. Ginocchio, did, uh, did you specify whether it should be um, the grass paver or the concrete? No. No, so that either he was saying either or. Okay, and in your recommendations, it was you felt it was could be either or. That's right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Janaki. Would that change your recommendations if both of them were done in uh, grassy pavers? Well, we. No, I don't think so. Okay. The one could stay if I had a little more on that. I think the challenge is, while the concept is much appreciated of trying to do grassy pavers, this is parked on, to my understanding, to a pretty regular basis, isn't it? So the odds of grassy pavers being able to, to have green very, very um, fully is pretty slim. Uh, and so uh, it's a noble thought, but I think the practical reality, if it's used to the extent it seems it is, would be that they would just be bare pavers with maybe some tufts of grass occasionally. Uh, but that, I think, is, I concur with Mr. Ginocchio's reservation about it altering the staff recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Ginocchio. The applicant would come back forward. Okay, sir, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, that's pretty much it. Anything else? Okay. No, and, you know, I haven't landscaped at all yet, so... I mean, yeah, that's not how it's going to look in the end. I fixed it up a lot. I don't know if you saw it previously, but I've noticed a ton of work going on there in the last is, uh, year, at least a year. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to do my best to fix it up, and I want to keep it in the character of the neighborhood too. So. 
That's it. Thanks. Well, I, I have a question, sure. if you don't mind. Uh, the plan that I have shows a driveway at the 552 address mm -hmm. that actually fronts out to High Street. Um, does anybody use that driveway of the three tenants, three yes. cars? So that's used. Mm -hmm. They they have to have access to the to the garage. Do you know what I mean? Like that driveway goes right up it, and the door opens, goes into the garage. I see. And of the three tenants, one lives in the detached garage. No, that's the church. The church is renting that. I mean, they they got like lawn mowers and whatnot in there. But a guy parks his car in there sometimes. So the garage is not inhabited. The garage is not inhabited. No. Uh -uh. Okay, my understanding from the staff report was that somebody actually rented and lived in the garage. Yeah, I was a little. They rented the space. Well. Okay, but nobody actually lives in the garage. Then. Correct. Oh, okay, that's what. what it has a pedestrian door and all, and, and a, a we've seen address. stranger things, so we thought it meant. So, inhabited. just to be clear, how many cars park here on a regular basis at this address? Four. Four. Three people rent the house. Gotcha. So Each one of them has a car. I and see. the person that rents the garage has a car. But he doesn't always, you know, park there. I see. But he, he but needs access to it. He works for the church? Yes. Okay. The church sold me the property initially. All right. And they maintained that spot because it's full of their stuff. Ladders and whatnot. So they're still renting that for me. And it has all their stuff in it. So that garage door is operational when they open. I mean, it's, the way I interpreted when I read this was that one rents the garage with a separate address, but that garage door had been sealed and somebody was actually living in the garage as a... As well, a the garage apartment. door is basically sealed, but it, it can function. Okay, but it does open and close? Yes. Oh, okay. That's, I, that was a got, different interpretation of what I initially had. You've got a mailbox and electric service mm -hmm. at the garage? The, it, it's, a complicated, it's a complicated property. Um, and it was it was you know vacant for a long time, so I've been going through a lot of stuff with it. Um, as far as I could tell, it was like a God's pantry for a long time, and it was like a Boy Scout Boy Scout place. I mean, it's got a bathroom, it's got a full fireplace. It's a. I would just add that building inspection and historic preservation work sort of towards figuring out the precedent that was kept by this garage having a separate address. And so building inspections aware of the limited use and nobody being able to have inhabit it, but they could rent it as a space. Oh, and, and I, I'm not asking that because I, I really care if somebody's living there or not. I'm just, I'm, I mean, it doesn't matter to me, or even if it's allowed I'm or trying not. to answer I'm, your question. I'm just, in my mind, I'm trying to solve, I'm trying to think through the solution to the problem, which is and I, I want to preserve um, the property without laying down concrete if we can. Sure. Figuring out what the needs are and how to do that um, as permissible under the guidelines. Absolutely. Mr. Hospital, did you have any other questions? I'm, I interrupted you. I apologize. No, I, I, I'm about as clear as I can be on that situation. <laughs> um, Randy, can you put up the photograph from the front of the property that looks, I guess the church is sort of on the right-hand side? So the front doesn't actually have a driveway, it's a sidewalk. That is correct. That is from uh, okay. uh, High Street. If you walked out that door, you go right to the tennis courts. Okay, I was in, in the drawing we have, this looked like a driveway to me, and that's what I was. No. It's a sidewalk, okay. Now I have the answer to my original question. Does that help? And I would also, and I would also point out that on the driveway, if you could show the next picture, that my property line is almost all the way to the, to the building on the left. My property line goes almost to uh, where the dumpsters are. I mean, it goes to like within that far of the house on the left. It looks like somebody's pulled through the backyard between the garage and the house there. There was like some type of shed back in there that they tore apart that was full of uh, broken glass and whatnot. So I receded that whole area. That whole area was previously uh, what is the distance between the edge of the uh, driveway now and, and the edge of the garage on the right-hand side? In the drawing, it's a 10-foot mm -hmm. area is proposed, but how, how far does it actually go over? Does what go over? I, I know that answer. 
Sure. Please. It's 41 feet. The total total width is? No, from from the sidewalk to the garage. Was no, that no. the question? I'm talking about just the width of the garage. If you, if from, how much further does the yard extend from the edge of the driveway over to the edge of the garage? Oh, it's point? 24 feet across. It's 24 foot. What's it's the garage it's itself. A, and it's, it's a, two foot. The, this driveway edge on the left goes two feet off the corner. On the left-hand side? Uh -huh. Yeah. And the current one's eight foot wide? The garage opening is eight foot. And you'll see there's a little tooch of concrete right in front of the pedestrian door mm -hmm. existing. And then the balance being earthen. There. So it's probably approximately 12 feet, would you all say, from the edge of the pavement to the edge of the garage toward the house, give or take a foot. From where now, when you step out the door to the No, end. from the, the edge of what is the real driveway pavement, mm -hmm. not the tooch, but the actual edge of the, the drive-on part to the corner of the garage closest to the house. In other words, to the right as you're facing the garage. He's asking about the green. How wide is the green? Randy, point, if you will, to where we're talking. Thank you. Okay. From there to there. From there to there, that's approximately 20 feet. The little, the little thing, the part that comes out, the existing part that comes out, mm -hmm. that's almost right exactly 20 feet. Nine and a half. The little tooch? The little part that comes out in front of the door. Mm -hmm. Well, then how big's your garage? Look, how wide? Let me ask a practical question. You're, you're essentially looking for a parking place for three cars, correct? Or yes. If, if, I, the concept that has been proposed where you want basically two parking wings mm -hmm. on the existing driveway seems to impede uh, the, what the property is today and seems unnatural. Um, if you were able to extend the driveway over to the edge of the garage and, and t taper it back in, that would give you essentially a 20-foot sure. parking pad. Would that be sufficient? Absolutely. And taper it in. And that's, what, that, that's what my thoughts are at this point, that that would be the better solution for all of this rather than having rust done. Sure. But I, it would be less, I think, visually dominant. But I'm certainly, my willing, to, I'm certainly willing to listen to suggestions. If you have a better idea, I am very willing to listen I'm not sure they're better. I'm just trying to find solutions that I think work. And I guidelines. appreciate that. Mr. Magrish. Um, I, I, I agree with your suggestion. I think that um, I think per the recommendation to keep it to all of the new paving to the right, but maybe expand it um, beyond the 10 foot request uh, to the additional five feet, four feet, whatever, um, and then bring it back in, taper it back into the driveway, um, might uh, help you with your parking problems without quite uh, making it a very, it, it's a little bit awkward with just these two wings coming out. And plus, if as you said, you're using this as kind of a patio or terrace area, uh, it actually relates more back to the house and the back door there. Sure. Um, and uh, I think that that might be a little bit better solution. Um, but still gain the, some additional parking for you. Mr. Hosfield? So my tendency is actually back towards the staff's original recommendation. I feel like by lengthening, you know, just adding on to the right side of the driveway and then lengthening the amount beyond what's been proposed and then actually widening it also, uh, lends itself back to visual dominance, and we're, we're getting closer to that. Uh, I, I know it doesn't meet your needs of three parking spots. I, I think that you could probably still fit three cars off street on the driveway at, with the staff's recommendations. I know it does not lend itself to three people being able to, you know, unfettered access to their cars and then to the street. Uh, but I also 
I, I feel like that's a problem that three roommates could work out between themselves. Uh, I know I did in college quite a bit. So I, my, my feelings are that the staff recommendation is, is a good one, and I would probably vote that way. Any questions from the audience or comments from the audience? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. In regards to case number 092905522-B, I make the motion that the application be accepted, including the staff recommendations. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Is, 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 is there another motion? Um, actually, I'm sorry. Did you, just, to, did you want to second the motion? I'm just going to go ahead and second that motion. Okay. Thank you. Um, any additional discussion about the motion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Nay. Motion carries. Okay, so I can build like one spot? That's correct. It's the staff. But I don't have to, right? No, no, you don't have to at all. Thanks. No, you, you can build the one on the right, the right hand side, which is the staff recommendation. Or I can do nothing. Or you can do nothing. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. And you can tell your tenants it's the board's fault. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to the next case, number nine on tonight's docket, case number 1901-3081-G, located at 3081 Old Todd's Road in the Caden Town uh, Historic District. Is that applicant present this evening? Could you please come forward and state your name, sir? Uh, James Taylor. Mr. Taylor, have you had a chance to review the staff uh, finding of disapproval is submitted? Yes. Are you in agreement or disagreement with that? A disagreement. Okay. Let me do this. Um, let me have the staff come up and give the full report on this case, and then we'll call you back up uh, to discuss the matter. Okay, thanks. Mr. Janakio, you have all the fun ones this evening. I've had better times. <laughs> this is property at 3081 Old Todd's Road. Uh, the house is existing. This shot is from across the street, which shows you the garage, the apron. This is down the driveway beside the house, the right side elevation. The rear of the house, uh, which we recently, uh, the board approved uh, for a uh, small deck out, the second floor deck there with that window being converted to a door in the gable. This is the left side of the house. The left elevation, and this is the rear yard quite deep, and the applicant would like to be able to put a second entry into the property. So this is a site plan showing where the area is proposed to have the to drive. This is a detailed engineering drawing showing the contours that will be made for that cut. And then I think one more shot, just a slide that shows the, that area to be paved. So at this time, the applicant's request in the board grant COA 
to cut a second driveway so that he might access the rear yard for storage of a boat. Description of proposed work includes a cutting of the second vehicular entrance at the left end of the front property line and grading approximately uh, 90 feet of road bed. The road bed is to be 12 foot wide with aprons at coat and a curb cut, which is 18 foot wide. Maximum cut to be approximately five feet of earth with the banks contoured to provide the required sight lines and avoid any retaining walls. One tree is to be removed. Uh, paving of the 90 feet of roadbed is to be with asphalt. At the time of this writing, it was not known if the cutting materi cut material was to be hauled from the project or else wasted on site. Also, the size of the tree to be removed was unknown. Uh, we've listed the guidelines for your reference, the findings, the concept of constructing a new driveway to access the rear yard of this property is found appropriate within the guidelines. However, the manner by which it is achieved requires careful consideration. Reference a second paved driveway across the front yard of this historic landscape. Guidelines 3.5b states, driveways and parking lots that are new should be located at the side or rear of the building and not be visually dominant. Also, Guidelines 3.6e states, landscape, land features, land formations, few shades, and archaeology of open space should only be developed in scale and character with the neighborhood of the designated historic landmark. Staff finds that the combination of increasing paving in front yard plus the loss of the open lawn area would be respectfully visually dominant and not in character with the neighborhood. If the existing driveway through the front yard were removed and returned to lawn area, the proposed new entry way or drive might be considered. Recommendation staff recommends disapproval is submitted. Thank you, Mr. Ginocchio. Does Welcome. the board have any questions for staff? Mr. Baggers? Mr. Hosfield? Sorry, questions for the... Just questions for the staff before I... No, not at this time, sir. Thank you. Uh, if the applicant would like to step back up to the podium. Um, you've heard the staff report is uh, recommending disapproval of the project. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're trying to accomplish and then address their concern about the, um, a couple of their concerns concerning uh, the new driveway not being in compliance with the guidelines of being um, visually dominant and um, not in scale and character with the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, the uh, primary driveway now that I have, sir, they got a garage. It's not attached to the home, and it kind of blocks anything from going out back of the property. In other words, if I wanted to buy a boat or even build me another new garage out back, I can't get access to the real the property through that one driveway because of the garage. So I bought the home in 2005, and I've been renovating it to live in since, and I've been spending money on inside and outside and whatever. And, and uh, so now I've got, I got that accomplished, and I was wanting to fix it so I can have, you know, hobbies, whatever, to have a boat or pontoon or whatever, and have access to get to real property. And this is the only way I can do it without turning the garage down. You know, if I could, we, we looked at taking the constructed garage and move it back 100 feet, maybe then that would accomplish what I was trying to be doing. Which these stated here, they, they wouldn't sit, mind me tie that old driveway out, the ones in there now, and we sit in grass and then do the driveway on the left, which that would be logical too, but uh, then the garage would be kind of the way it's laid out of the front porch and entry to the house and everything, where they got it laid out now. It is in the wrong place. It would be 
kind of shifted over to the wrong place. So I have around an acre and a half, more or less, I think, what the deed calls for. And I just thought it nice, you know, since I could afford it to give me a driveway in or so, so I can access the back of my property and build, you know, do what, you know, my build, my petition in the future, build me a, a new garage back there. Because the way the primary driveway is now, I'm limited to parking. I got my wife's car in the garage. I parked my truck to the left of the garage so she can back in and out of it. Turn around. I got a turn around spot. You know, when I, but I was going to put the, had a driveway, grab a driveway, you know, I, I asked for this since I've been there. So when I planned all that out, I put a turn around so you don't have to back out in the road, you know. But I'm limited. If you have company, a couple of cars, you know what I'm saying? You can get a couple of cars in there with them. They, get, we, they get the go and come, you know. But I have, it's kind of limited to me to, to, to um, having a, if you put a boat out there in front, you know, you, you know, if you parked that 24 7, you know, what time you weren't using it, it restricts all these other things that you got company coming and nothing else. But so uh, I went and got an engineering firm and got with the city and see what they thought about it. And, and I got with Jim Gilmore and he said, well, said, we normally don't give two driveways, but in your situation, we you know, make different policy, and, and if you do it the way we want it done, you know, according to... And who is this? Uh, Jim Gilmore. He works for the city. Okay, so traffic and engineering? Yeah. So he came out and looked at it, and he seen it, my situation that he said, no, man, we don't give two driveways, but under your situation, we could justify doing it. So, but he wanted me to get a engineering and do it according to make it have... Uh, come off the road 12 feet and you have sap both ways and all that and and so I don't, we hadn't done that and got that done to to comply with city and then I had to comply with the uh, historic <coughs> neighborhood too which it's like the chicken and egg which one comes first you go to them first or you go to the, <laughs> the city first but uh, I went to the city first and got Jim and he came out, and then after I did, I consulted him to start preservation. Said, well, well, let me ask you. This is a copy of the engineering things. And let me ask you a question. Uh, traffic and engineering is mainly probably concerned about the curb cut and the site for traffic, um, that's, ingress that's and egress. That's great. They're, they're probably not that concerned about the actual material for the driveway or the length of it. Uh, I can't imagine. Well, once. they are actually a little concerned about the, the apron and how long it goes in there because of the no, um, you know, can't. You don't usually put a gravel, you know, so close to the roadbed because you have in the urban service boundaries and it's sort of extending in this okay. area that no gravel rule does apply still. So that's why, and because of the way Mr. Gallimore explained, the reason why there was so much paving back is because it had, because of the curb cut. And so that was the reason that you do see the length of paving. Mr. Gallimore has explained and I, that. I have to say too, I mean, it's for if the first of all, I understand the length of the driveway and actually prefer it because if anything were to be stored on that driveway, I would want it further away from the front of the house, which which makes good sense to me. I'm just thinking about what would set there most days of the year. Um, I'm wondering when the staff made the comment that if the original driveway were removed and the new driveway became the driveway uh did that and and dealing with your situation also of the garage doors and everything being oriented on the other side of the house in that recommendation did that include getting to that side of the house that is to say if the original driveway and curb cut went away would it you know i've in my mind i imagine that the new driveway that's being proposed be the curb cut and then it branch off and go in front of the house and connect to the existing carport in addition to is that your intent or I I'd just like you to speak more to that option from the staff no I I think the intent would be that you have one 
roadway coming in down along the side of the structure. So this roadway would go down the left side, and if you were to access the garage in that position, there might the roadway would probably come around the back side and enter the garage from the back end. The, the door would probably be changed. But that's okay. But that but your, your solution haven, requires e even more work on the house itself to make that work. That's right, part of your uh, all right. I, I don't think you, you would not come back across the front of the house. With okay, the I, that was the only way I could see to make that work without renovating the house extensively. And yeah, just want to make sure that was or no. was not your intent. Can staff ask one quick question? Has consideration been given to moving your existing garage, just swinging it around to be behind the house so you could use your existing driveway, maybe turn left into the garage? In other words, you'd orient it so the doors face uh, your side yard property to the, toward uh, the former Liberty Road, and then pass it on by and go on into your property deeper? Is that, have you given consideration you to that? Highest, deeper into my property with the road, and bring it around to the back and come into the side of the garage. No, I'm saying if you um, used your existing driveway and swung your existing garage to this location, that being behind the house, but contiguous to this driveway, then you're, you could extend the length of that driveway and you know it would just become more able to be used as a travel path. Admittedly, it involves moving your garage. So had you con given consideration to that? Because given all you're talking about doing to accomplish this other cut, in some ways, is your, your garage may be able to be picked up and moved, is what I'm getting to. So could you let the board know if you've looked at that and, and your thoughts that. on that? I had considered that, and I was thinking around fourteen to $15,000 for the Relocation of the garage. If you do, if you want to relocate the garage, ten to twelve, fifteen thousand dollars worth of cost. Uh. Well, the road is going to cost. Which I done spent two thousand dollars on engineering. Uh, the road, I think, is going to cost around eight thousand dollars to put the road in. This new road. So give me the the one out. Does that include all the grading, doing the curb cut? Right, grading and asphalting. Um, That's not no retaining wall. I understand. What does? How far does your does your apron have to be? Um, did traffic engineering tell you that, or does staff know? Amelia, was that discussed or? I've actually been in meetings with traffic engineering, and he means the right. Nate, uh, Mr. Billings, the question is: How long does this have to be in? It has to be the 18 feet, but it's as proposed. About 18 foot wide. I'm talking wide. about depth Step. from the road, though. As proposed, he's as uh, conveyed to me by traffic engineering. What he has here is pretty much the minimum. The he's minimum. at 90 feet minimum because of the grade cutting, the grade change. Because of that. But my wow. neighbors over next door, there's 90 feet too. Mm -hmm. They but actually do have very lengthy neighbor, labor. Right mm -hmm. in, the same way this does. But this is the minimum of what he needs to have. Well, that shoots the mighty in the head then. <laughs> Which was just do an apron yeah. and leave it grass for now. But the uh, the home to the right of me, the, their driveway is the same way it comes up. Yeah, we can actually, you can actually look at the screen and tell their driveway is next to yours. Yeah, the time it tops out, it's, it comes out about 80 feet in the yard too. So he, he don't want it to go, the engineering don't want it to go straight down into the road. They want you to gradually, gradually come up to Right. Well, I knew that, yeah, they, they want definitely a gradual slope, but what I didn't know if, if they just would require you to have a minimum apron depth of 18 or 20 feet instead of a 90 feet of asphalt. And that if you did, there's a potential other alternative, which is do this, instead of having a driveway that goes 90 feet into your property, just do your apron cut at this time and your, um, your landscaping in the front um, for your for your curb cut, and then address the, the driveway later on. But if they're making you have 90 feet of asphalt for driveway, that's not an option. Um, 
I, one of my concerns about this is, um, I think I understand exactly what you want, and I completely appreciate it. Um, there's, there's a component to this that I don't think is, is before us yet, and that is um, you, you're wanting the driveway for purposes that you're not sure what you're going to use it for yet. I'm going to use it for my own personal use as far as taking anything in out of my property. If I want to build anything back there, like we have a three-car garage, a new one. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying is right now is that you don't have that purpose in mind. You don't, you're don't. you not saying, oh, I have the garage ready. Um, no. And no. That's, that's what I'm saying is there's a component here that we're missing for, I think, our purpose, at least in my mind, is that what you want to do, I completely understand. I definitely understand your purpose in, in wanting it done. But that end, the end goal is you're, you're wanting to do this as an intermediary step towards a towards a, a something else in the future, but you don't know what that something else is yet. Well, you got to have the road in them before you can do anything. I can, if, I, if I go buy a boat and put it in a trailer, I can't park it in this other driveway. I have to have this road in there before I can buy a boat. I have to have this done before I can have any plans of putting anything, buying a boat, pontoon, building anything back there. I have to have the road in before I have, that has to come first before I can. Do if we, I was to go buy a boat this summer, did I have to park it over on this other driveway? But or the road's not in do we, do we have a picture of the front of the house that shows the existing driveway, the house, and the garage? Yeah, he had it on. He had it on. You had it on camera, man, too. That was the garage, I told you. You see, where that red van is, that's my turnaround. I, I usually try to keep that open. Is that a good thing? Squeeze that little on the bottom, back underneath. I heard I got a turnaround out here. How far from the street is that turnaround? It's probably about from this street level. You know that turnaround? I'm 50 feet. If you could use the microphone, sir, that way. Uh, about 50 feet. You go down. This has showed it. It's asphalted now. This shows when I bought it, it had gravel. Since then, I've asphalted this road back to my garage. Then I fixed a place, this tree here, on the other side of the tree, I got a turnaround, like 14 feet wide. I can back my car in there and turn around and come out so I don't have to back out the road. Okay. Before the guy owned it, you see, he he just had gravel. He didn't have nothing to do with me. I don't know how he backed out the road evidently. Since I bought it, I put a asphalt driveway. I think 12 feet wide and go back 105 feet to that road. And on the other side of this tree, which is Sir, if you could make sure you hold the microphone close to your mouth. That way okay. we're, on, we're on television, too, so the people at home uh, watching can uh, can hear you. Okay. 60 feet approximately from this Todd Road, that tree is an asphalt 14 feet wide. So when I come out of my garage, I can back in here and come out. So my wife, I keep her car in the garage, and I put my truck parallel to the road here, straight. Right now you see this car in a yard. That's part of the yard now, green space. And this is green space over here, which is asphalt road. And it's, my asphalt is wide as the garage, 24 feet wide up here. And it comes back down to 12 feet coming up the road here. So I cannot, if I bought a pontoon boat, I had to park it in here. I can't get in and out of here. It would restrict me in this tight place. So that's the reason I want to step over here and put that road in that wouldn't have wouldn't have no complications here. And I entered my home through the porch here. There's, there's a deck. That's where I come in and out, or I can come in and out the front here, off in this uh, little sidewalk. Goes out to this asphalt road here. Right? I, put, I put a sidewalk. Up. I probably spent about seventy thousand dollars here trying to renovate this home into a place for me to live. And now 
I'm wanting to, you know, uh, keep renovating it so I can have, uh, you know, a decent place to live here in Lexington, you know, and have have things. And that's why and I, I've been since 2005 doing it. When I first bought this home, you could see uh, it had uh, it had a gra gravel driveway, and there's a lot of inside. I put all new windows in it. I put hardwood floors in it. I put a new roof on it. I put new garage doors on it. So I spent a lot of money on this home trying to give me a, a, a good place in Lexington to live. I mean, it's an old home. People say you're crazy for doing it, but I like the location. And uh, and it, I mean, it gives me, I'm, I'm old, I'm retired, so it gives me a place I can get my shopping done. Well, let, let, me, let me bring us back to task. I mean, I, I, I can understand that. And, I, and um, is this the house that was in really, really bad shape? Originally, when I bought it, yes. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, it was almost in falling down condition. It wasn't that, it wasn't as There's bad. There's one out there that's in real bad shape. It was in bad shape. And I didn't know if that was this, this, was that this one or is that another one? This one was in bad shape. I renovated okay. it. It's a different one. I mean, the one I'm thinking of. There's other ones that's more shape than this. Oh, okay, that's the one I was thinking of. Then. Well, anyway, we're still in. What 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 I want to do is make sure we we stay on task about the application tonight. Um, understanding that you have done a ton of spent a ton of time and energy and love, and thankfully mm -hmm. making historic property livable again um, for you and your family. And that's what our goal is too: is to make sure that these properties stay um, livable, that their character is preserved. Um, I'm, I'm still in, I'm missing what I understand you say you want to, you might get a boat in the future. If you might get a pontoon, you might get a boat. You might want to well, I'm build a garage. Get, I, I'm, I'm wanting to get a boat. I've got the money. I mean, but here's what expenses behind me. I, and I've been on but here's what I've got is, is, um, I don't, I think that your application is missing a key component. Um, which is what your what the end goal of the property is going to be rather than just the driveway to do the driveway um, You've also talked about you might do a garage. You might not you're not sure And so is what I it, it, I'm just telling you what my thoughts are is that in looking at the guidelines okay. with respect to um, I don't want the, to get myself. The, I don't want to get myself way ahead. Of, I know uh, I'm gonna do way in the future and I think I'm doing it I've, I've told you things I might do in the future mate that uh, but Anything in the future has to have a role. It's like the chicken and egg thing. You've sure. got to have a role before you can do these other things. Is it, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I was had a quick question for you. Is there, it seems on this uh, site plan that we have um, that there may be enough room to go to the right of the garage with a uh, sort of split off of the driveway that then would access, uh, access the rear of the property. Um, I believe there's about 20 feet. Mr. Magrish, are you referring to this plan? Yeah. This plan is based on shadow lines, and it is not as accurate as you, is it seems that there is not as much room between the garage here and the property line. Okay, so the scale this, isn't yeah, true. Yeah, the scale is, well, what happens is it's on shadow lines, so it's not exactly as close. Okay. You know, it's far away. It's actually much closer. Six foot. Oh, okay. I'm, never yeah, mind. We, we've all been wishing <laughs> for them the to thing. have We're more feet to, to the right. Yeah. <laughs> Six foot, I think. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. I just uh, misread right. this. Mr. Magris, any further questions? Well, I, I, I appreciate everything that you've done so far, and I can really see where you're sort of in a bit of a quandary, and as you were saying, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? The, I think the problem is basically that um, you know we can't approve a driveway to park a boat. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> um, I mean, but if we, I don't mean it in that respect. No, no, I understand. I'm coming across wrong. I, I yeah. don't mean it. No. I mean it. I need a driveway to use the back of the property. No, I, I understand That's why that. I need a driveway to have my property back there that I can use it. Right. I want to use it in what over? Well, what a particular what, boat or? A, oh no, no. I, I was just saying this. Give me access so I can use the back of my property. What you might want to do, and and this, I know it, it's one more step, and, you, and it seems sort of arbitrary, but if you could uh, give us 
a con what's known as a conceptual plan of what you plan to do with the overall property. It doesn't mean you have to do it. It doesn't even mean that you have to apply for the additional work right now. But if we could see that, you know, well, you know, in a few years I'm going to build a new garage here, I'm going to put a, a, a storage building out here or whatever, and sort of show us where this will lead to, um, then we kind of see that, oh, yeah, this is phase one, you might say, and then go on to the other. The, the problem is that just as it stands sort of as it's presented, I know that you have good intentions to do some nice things uh, like what you've done with the rest of the property. But um, I think that we need to have a little bit better, something on paper that would show us what your eventual idea is. And then, you know, we can look at this as simply phase one and then a garage would be phase two and however you'd want to stage it. Yeah. Well, that'd be fine. I can, I can do that. I can, I can get a... And I, I realize... I hate... Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, I realize <clears throat> it doesn't meet your needs now, but we have to review and rule on what is in front of us tonight, and I believe the guidelines are pretty clear that we can approve the driveways. You've submitted it. However, to echo what's being said, <clears throat> what could be considered at a later date, I mean, we can talk about what you'd like to do in the future this evening, but that doesn't, that's not what's being applied for at this moment, uh, what's to happen in the future. What might get farther in consideration, as what has been said here, is an overall site plan of your intent in the future. And I think what should be considered in the putting that drawing together or that set of plans together are the staff comments of that they've made so far in the findings for this case, as far as driveways, number of driveways, uh, and the dominance as far as having two driveways and the problems with all the asphalt. We're, we're starting to get a lot of paved surface here, especially when you add a whole new driveway. Uh, I understand the garage as it is now doesn't work with relocating the driveway completely. So that would also need to be addressed in a future site plan, if, if that's clear. What, the, the garage? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I understand doing away with the driveway you have now in order to get the driveway that you're applying for this evening doesn't meet your needs of being able to use the garage as it is. I, I would recommend that a, an overall plan be put together and that fixing that problem also be part of your overall plan for your property. And I would, and I would, I could uh, I'll get a plan that I could deconstruct that garage, and move it back out of my way, and rebuild it. We built a new garage. I, I don't know that that's the only solution to your problem. Use that but same I, driveway. I encourage the driveway some I thought now. in that direction, that that meets the needs of the staff and the recommendations and guidelines of working in a historic district but also meets your needs of using the back half of your property. I understand your, your desire to access the rear of your lot. I understand to get anything into your backyard of size, you need a point of access. And I, I see clearly that in your situation right now, you do not have that access. So your intent is clear as far as what you want to do with this driveway. But as far as what's in the application this evening, I don't think we can approve it. So I just need to resubmit it. Is that well, here, let, let me ask some more comments before you, before you make a conclusion about what we're saying. <clears throat> I think that what your ultimate goal is is you have a beautiful, wonderful acre plus size lot in the backyard that's underutilized, and you're trying to make better use of the property. Well, no, I is that <laughs> you miss you miss the term. First and foremost, I'm a homeowner. That, I, I, if I wasn't a homeowner, that. I'm not an investor. Oh, we understand that. So if I was an investor, I wouldn't put. $60,000 in an old home. Right. We're, so first and foremost, I'm a homeowner. We understand that. After I'm a homeowner, I like to have toys. Right. But first, I had to take my excess money I had and, and, and accomplish redoing my home. Now that I have that over with, I have some cash flow that I, in the next year or two, I'm really having that I can buy some a boat if I, if I select it. Or, but you got to have some place to put them. I don't, I don't have no... Right. I had, to, but I had to build a driveway, too, to, 
So, so take that boat back though. But if you'll bear with me, if you bear with me, Mr. Taylor, what you know, you, you're, you're basically wanting to start utilizing your property better. You want to utilize it to store a boat. You want to utilize it. Why well, utilize to store, it the way I see? Yeah. You know. I mean, it's just, we're we're talking the same thing. It's just yeah, semantics. Same. Um, and, and so what you're doing is exactly what is great about about old properties like this and you could have some fun with it now there's there's one of I think three ways to, to do this you could either one build a brand new driveway like you propose to go down the other one go down the left side of the property with the existing driveway that's not allowed under the guidelines um, I think it's too visually dominant and to have two driveways I don't think it's consistent with the intent of the guidelines so the second option would be use your existing driveway and somehow cut around the front of your house or around the side to access the back of the property. It doesn't seem like those are viable options. The right side of the property is too tight with the fence line, and you probably doesn't seem like you want to cut a driveway across the front of your house and then cut it back because you didn't propose that. So my guess is you don't so want to do that. if you did that, it would be the same thing. You'd be doing with your green space, more of well, your green but, space doing that way. Uh, well, it's, it's, you are cutting away your green space. So I agree there's some problems with that, and that's why you didn't propose it. The third one would be to take the garage you have, move it out of the way and use that yeah. in the future. So um, there are, are a couple different alternatives here. What we're saying is that what we have, the application you've submitted to us tonight is not complete enough for us to, to um, understand long-term what you're gonna do with the property in order to affect what you wanna do that's within the guidelines. And that two driveways probably aren't going to be permitted under the guidelines. That doesn't mean that you may not be able to have a Y at some point in your driveway and have one drive, one go off to a parking lot and one lead to the back of the property. Um, there, there could be a number of different designs that might work. We're not trying to see that. that one driveway, like it says in here, I can just dig here back up, put in green space, and then I can get approved for this left one, right? Sure. That's. I mean, that's. That would be. That would be. A, that would be a potential. For that? that would be. Yeah. That would be a potential alternative. But that's not before us tonight. We don't have a sketch of what it would look like. Um, but that's certainly a potential alternative to look at. Well, I mean, that's what says in here. Says, right, that's what, that's what the staff... If the existing driveway through the front yard were removed and returned to the lawn, then the proposed new entry might be considered. Might be considered, that's right. So, is, it'll, and here's what I would suggest you do, is that the staff is really, really good about seeing out with applicants and, and saying, these are things that we think are consistent with the guidelines. So my suggestion would be spend some time with the staff to say, these are what I really want to do with the property. You know, I have a garage right now that I, I want to tear down within five years. I want to build a three-bay garage. It's 100 foot back from my house, but i got to be able to access it. How do we do this? Help me work through the process. What you're going to find um, is that they're going to help you accomplish what you want to do, preserve the integrity of your property and the historical nature of the neighborhood, and the end product you're going to be a whole lot happier with. There's other applicants who come here who don't do that, and they get well, frustrated. I thought I had worked with them on that. Well, and I think I think you're on this. I think you're ahead. Good relationship. I think I think you do. I think you're heading in the right direction. Um, so tonight we have two options. I think we can do one of two things. We can either vote on the application as submitted, which I'm not in favor of because it's not complete enough. Or two, you can would if you want to withdraw the application and then continue working with staff to to submit a new one in the future. Um, my suggestion is the second option may be better for you. But um, but I'm happy to, you know, to take a vote on it too. Would you be willing to do that? Yeah, yeah, I'd be willing to resubmit it. Okay, why don't um, why don't we just based on that comment then we'll take it that you you would want to withdraw the application to resubmit it um, based upon continued working with the staff. Yes. And that one of the things I might suggest is what's called a conceptual review that Mr. Magris was talking about earlier. Conceptual review is not where you come back to get it approved, but you come back to say this is sort of what I, what I want to do. What are your thoughts about it? We don't vote yes or no, but we say this is a bad idea, this is a good idea, we think this is consistent with the guidelines, so that you know when you make your final application uh, what we're more inclined to grant versus deny. Um, that's a great way, especially with what you're doing, which is a big project, um, that's a great way to get the board's feedback on that. Okay. Is that, would that be fair to say? Well, I, I think the conceptual review is an excellent way, but what I I think what I was specifically saying was that it, you, to develop a conceptual plan for the entire property and just break it out into phases. That way we know that, you know, this, the driveway, whatever configuration it may be, goes to a future garage, it goes to whatever you want. Um, it doesn't mean you have to do it right now, but we can then look at it and if it is just the first 90 feet of the driveway is phase one, that's fine. Then you, you can come back at a later date Phase two may be the garage and phase three. But if you have like uh, 
the whole thing laid out just the way you want it, then we know where you're going with it. And that way, you know, there are no uh, questions and, and then everybody sort of is on the same plane. And uh, I, I think it will be beneficial to you and also to see what can be done with the property. I think it's important, too, to make clear that going through these steps of working with the staff and going through a conceptual review still does not guarantee results, Results, but it certainly gets you pointed in the right direction. It, And, and I just want to say that so there, there are no false implications here that that is how you attain absolute approval. But at the same time, it, it will help. It will help you have a design if, if the information or the guidance is heeded, <clears throat> it will help you have a project that is more likely to be approved. Well, I appreciate it. I, should, I mean, you know, I, I'm new to this. I'm a homeowner, and I, I, I have no great amount of education, but I have worked with you. Those have been good to me, and, and y'all have approved a lot of things over the period of four years that I've done. Well, we, we certainly on this property. appreciate your intent to improve your home and, and the efforts you've made so far. And, and we appreciate your time bearing with us tonight as we walk through this. I think is very important step in the future development of uh, of your property. I think it's going to think you continue doing this, and you're going to be very very pleased long term. You're going to have a great historical home um, with some amenities that a lot of other historical places don't have. Um, we just got to go through some process to make sure we preserve the integrity of it. And I'm I'm excited for you. I appreciate your patience with me. Thank you, sir. Most please. Thank you. Um, the next case on the agenda is, is that is that withdrawn? Let's see, it's postponed until July eighth. Uh, yes, the applicant and, requested a postponement until July the eighth. Uh, case numbers ten and eleven, located at one thirty five Clay Avenue and four thirty two South Broadway, have requested postponement till um, July eighth. Um, do we need a motion on that? Please, if Chairman and Chair, motion. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, now we'll return to uh, case number three on the docket, case number 13020321-B. We had called earlier. Um, staff had indicated that they had heard that the applicant was agreeable with the staff recommendations, but we went ahead and tabled it in case they wanted to show up. Um, there's no one else in the audience except staff, so I assume that they did not show up. Therefore, the chair will entertain a motion at this time. Okay, um, I'd like to make a motion uh, for case 13020321-B at 321 Marino Street to um, approve the uh, application as submitted. Would that be, uh, if the clerk could ask for clarification of the motion, that be for final details come back to um, staff yes, or I'm sorry. to the board? Uh, with the final details coming back to the staff. Thank you, Mr. Maggers. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next on our docket is a conceptual review for 353 South Mill Street. Um, the uh, applicant for that is a board member, and we are going to postpone that until July 22nd, is my understanding. Um, it's because, because we only have two board members here tonight. We would be able to hear that conceptual review. We're going to pass it um, for a month. That doesn't require a motion because there's no um, actual vote to be taken on that. Um, finally, we have minutes of three meetings before us. It's in order. They are February 25th, 2009, March 11th, 2009, and April 8th, 2009. Are there any comments or questions from the board concerning those minutes? Hearing none, the chair would entertain a motion. Do we need to accept these all together or individually? I think we can accept them. You could in your we? motion just note the three dates and do it in one motion, please. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, accept the minutes um, of the February 25th, 2009 meeting, the April, <laughs> excuse me, April 8th, 2009 meeting, and the March 11th, 2009 meeting of the Board of Architectural Review. Is there a second to the motion? 
Oh, second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in, all in favor of the motion uh, to approve the minutes from the three meetings as indicated in the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, minutes are approved. Uh, any other business for the board? The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Sir. Second. Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.